Shane Bauer is a journalist who was held in a prison in Iran for two years. Later, that experience would lead him to decide to go undercover as a guard in a Louisiana for-profit prison. I met him out for ramen, a dish that represents the commodification of food and power in prison. This is his story from both sides of the bars. I spent two years uh, in prison in Iran. Two friends um, and me went um, on a little trip. We went to northern Iraq, um, Iraqi Kurdistan, which at the time was um, considered safe. There was a small tourist industry. Right. And we uh, came near the Iranian border unknowingly and were detained. You spent months in a prison in Louisiana, yep. undercover as a prison guard. Yep. This prison is crazy. <laughs> beyond anything I ever imagined. That seemed really hard, especially after everything that you went through as a prisoner. Mm -hmm. How did this all happen? I just filled out an application on the website of Corrections Corporation. How did they America. not realize you were a reporter, though? This is what yeah. baffles me. Yeah, right. I mean, I filled out the application truthfully. I used my personal information, my real name. I. Uh, put my current employer on the you know application. A couple weeks later, I was getting phone calls. Why did you decide to to do it that way? Right, like lots of people write articles mm -hmm. about prisons without yeah. taking months off of their life. I guess um, you know prisons are an issue that that are pretty close to me. Um, that I think I think it's one of the more important issues in America mm -hmm. right now and in recent decades. Um, I think that when we look back, you know, 100 years from now, I think mass incarceration is going to be one of the defining issues of this era. We have right. more than two million people behind bars and when in the, the 1980s when the prison population really started to skyrocket, the states couldn't build prisons fast enough. So these companies right. stepped in, the Corrections Corporation of America was created and it said, look, we can build prisons for you. We can do this cheaper than you can and uh, we'll make money. The, the way that money has been made from prisoners has changed over time. Through most of our history there has been an attempt to profit from prisoners. When I was in prison in Iran, they would bring food to our cells. Right. At one point in the day, they would take us out to this kind of open-air cell for a little while. It's like our outdoor time. Right. When we'd come back, sometimes there would be the, the food carts and they would have some extra meals. And we would often take an extra tray and most of the guards would allow it because um, right. it was just leftover food. But one day, uh, there was a guard that got really angry about that. This guard came into my cell and almost beat me. It was, you know, it was a really intense, scary moment. It was all about this food tray that was going to probably go in the garbage. And then when I was a prison guard in Louisiana at the private prison, uh, the, the prison was on lockdown at, at one point, which means that um, prisoners were not allowed to leave their dorms. So we go into these dorms with a cart and give each person on their bed and we give them each one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and one prisoner took an extra tray, he took mm -hmm. two trays, and I saw him do it. And I, you know, went up to him and I was, I was yelling at him and saying, like, you know, give that tray back. And uh, I was just kind of standing over him. Oh. And, yeah, and there's a moment where I kind of it hit me, like, I'm here I am, like, yeah. on the other side, um, worrying about some guy having extra food, right. you know, <laughs> as if that affects me or anybody At else. all, right, yeah. right, right. You know, I spent so much time in prison dreaming about food. There would be times where we would get a new thing. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember when we got cabbage. Yeah. I, I would just sit with that thing, I'd close my eyes and, and eat it, and you, it's like you get all of it. You get like, yeah. I never thought, realized cabbage was spicy before, you know. Right. Uh, you know, you really appreciate the range of food that we have, you know, out right. here. And food, food's a, a big thing in prison, I mean, like anywhere else. Yeah. If you have nothing, you have to eat the cafeteria food. Um, right. If you have some means, you go to the canteen, you know, buy some honey buns or ramen, you know, ramen packets is a really right. big thing uh, right. in prison, yeah. Uh, and then you have people who kind of become like chefs in the prison, where they, not are actually working in the cafeteria, but right. in the dorms, people will pay them often with ramen packets. Right. Uh, that's a currency in prison. Uh, ramen packets are a currency. Yeah, they okay. call them soups. Okay. So, you know, uh, somebody might be the in a dorm of 44 guys, right. might be the kind of chef. Uh, maybe he has kind of a connect that works in the cafeteria that will kick him some fresh onions or vegetables. Mm -hmm. He'll take the ramen packets that people buy in the canteen and you know, spice it up a little bit. Corn chips or something becomes spice. Maybe uh, somebody will take the meat from their meal uh, in the yeah. cafeteria and um, use that in the ramen. You take some pork rinds, soak it in uh, Kool-Aid to make it right. a little sweet, and then, um, you know, 
put it put it in the soup. Slim Jims, that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, it's also a currency because yeah. a ramen packet has a uh, defined value. You could tell if somebody was really well off in the prison depending on how many ramen packets they had in their locker. Um, I remember one guy got put in solitary confinement and I'd clean out his locker and it was yeah. full of ramen packets and he had a huge bag of ramen. That was, it was clear to me that he had a lot of power in the prison. I heard of a guy who got stabbed for ramen packets. I mean, that's a thing that the prison kind of revolves around in a certain right. way. It's often an issue that comes up in prisons when you have like riots or right. big protests. The grievances are often about medical care and food. So I spent two years in prison, first four months in solitary confinement, and then the rest of the time I was in a cell with, with right. my friends. We went on a hunger strike to, to, to be able to see each other uh, when we were in solitary confinement. Um, eventually we were able to see each other for a half hour or an hour a day. It's very easy to become institutionalized in prison. Right. You know, your, your whole life is regimented. You don't have choices. Right, and what was, was eating like there? It was better than the food in, in the prison I worked really? at in Louisiana, for sure, yeah. I was working in a, a unit with 350 prisoners. It was just me and one other guard. It was nerve-wracking. You know, I don't have any you know, nightstick or pepper spray or anything like that. It's, it's just you. Yeah, I just have a yeah. radio. You know, not many people want to work for $9 an hour in a prison. Between the danger level, the bullshit we got to put up with from the ivory tower, and the lack of, uh, lack of a living wage, Nobody's going to put up with this shit forever. Did different prisoners get different kinds of food, like depending on where they were, like if they were in solitary or if they were like, had mental health problems? Yeah, um, at this prison, uh, in particular, if somebody uh, went on suicide watch, they mm -hmm. would get different meals. So it was like, you know, a bologna sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, uh, and some um, maybe apple slices. You know, I tallied up all the, the components of the meal. Um, I found that the, the caloric value of that meal was below USDA standards for just adult men. The mental health director actually told us that they want to get people out of suicide watch mm -hmm. because in suicide watch, a prisoner is, is guarded by one guard. Right. In the regular prison, one guard guards 170 people, so it costs money. Right. Um, so they try to make it as uncomfortable as possible. So they're trying to like incentivize yeah. getting out by making the food yeah. worse, yeah. so they want to get out so their mm -hmm. food is better. Yeah. That sort of blew my mind a little bit. It felt like they were all in some way kind of um, exploited by this, this for-profit system. There's lots of things that we could talk about maybe going on between white and black students, but we suspect that at least part of that has to do with hunger.